The DA plans to lay a criminal charge against EFF leader Julius Malema and MP Nazia Paulson. It follows a tweet of a picture of a gun captioned, Cowards move to the back, fighters attack. The opposition party says the comments are in response to protests by farmers in Senegal and the Free State. The DA's chief whip, Natasha Mazzoni, joins me now from Cape Town. Very good morning to you, Natasha. Tell us about this action that you're going to be doing today. Morning. Yes, I'll be laying uh, criminal charges against both EFF leader Julius Malema and uh, Member of Parliament Nazia Pulsa for incitement to violence. This follows uh, not only one but a series of tweets, which I will be handing in together with my affidavit uh, as annexes. Um, not only pictures of guns, but uh, pictures of uh, people shooting off uh, automatic rifles, then people shooting off pistols. Um, this is nothing more than a, a call to take up arms. We are members of parliament who sign a very serious oath and take a very serious oath before the justice of the constitutional court. And we deem this to be a great infringement, not only on our oath, but also an incitement of violence across the country when racial tensions have never been as high as they are at the moment. What do you hope to achieve from this court action? Well, up until now, Mr. Malema has seemed to got away with the most outrageous racial rhetoric and the most outrageous rhetoric regarding death and war and destruction across the country. And we feel that it's time that the police minister starts taking uh, these utterances very seriously. And we don't know at what time people will take Mr. Malema seriously enough and actually do what he instructs and take up arms when they attack. And that is a very scary thought. I mean, nothing happened after his comments um, in the clicks debacle when he says, you know, when he called for attack and we saw the ensuing violence there. I mean, what chance of success do you think you will get this time round? It seems, when you look at it, that he's untouchable. Well, police, in fact, are investigating the clicks uh, uh, complaint that was put in. It takes a while for uh, the wheels of justice to turn and the right police stations need to be contacted, etc. But we are certainly not giving up on this. I've laid a charge with the Ethics Committee of Parliament. I've laid charges at the Human Rights Commission. I've laid charges at the Equity Court. I'm going every which route I possibly can. In South Africa today, there is absolutely no way a member of parliament, or quite frankly, anybody, should be allowed to get away with the racial rhetoric hate that is spewed by Malema and his fascist thugs on a virtually daily basis. And I'm not going to stop until someone is held accountable for the attempt to bring about a rural civil war in this country. How do we balance freedom of speech in this country, particularly in this time? Well, freedom of speech is a very interesting thing because for some people, freedom of speech is okay if it's up to them and it's them talking. But it's not all right if it's someone else giving their opinion. There is what we desperately require in this country is an understanding of what hate speech is. What we desperately require in this country is for South Africans to understand that there is a rule, there is a piece of legislation that regards what incitement to violence is. And until someone that is reasonably uh, big in politics, and I use the word reasonably loosely, understands that there are consequences to these type of actions, uh, you know, people are going to get away with it. But what we desperately need to see is we need to see government taking a firm stance on understanding what hate speech is, what the consequences of hate speech is, and certainly what the consequences of incitement to violence are. Natasha, if somebody in your party were to do this, were to make those sort of comments, as, comments available to the public, what would you do? What would your response be? My immediate response would be a request to the federal executive to have them suspended pending the outcome of an internal investigation I would instruct the Shadow Minister of Police to lay charges against that member for incitement of violence or for hate speech. And I would also refer that member to the Human Rights Commission. It's a, a worrying time in our country's history at the moment, isn't it? I mean, you know, what the, the, that violence we saw at Seneca, the, the fact that political leaders feel that they can call people to arms. I mean, this is something that, that needs to be tackled. It's something that needs to be tackled immediately. And, and I think I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm terribly worried about where we're heading as a country. And it's the first time I think in my life that I've been truly worried that we do have the ability to see people taking up arms. And that is why I feel that it is my utmost responsibility. And I know my colleagues feel the same to stop the taking up of arms. 
I don't condone violence in any shape, way, or form. So I do not condone the violence that we saw in Senegal. I do not condone violence anyway. I don't believe that violence is the answer. I think that violence begets violence. But I do believe that we have a grouping of fascists in our country who do feel and who do think that the only way that they could ever have any possibility of growing larger than they possibly are at the moment is by a tactic known as divide and rule. And how they are doing that is in an attempt to divide us according to racial lines and according to cultural lines. And my hope is that the goodness that I know exists in all South Africans will overcome this rhetoric and overcome this attempt to divide us. And that South Africans will realize that Gandhi once, uh, not Gandhi, um, Martin Luther King once said, if we continue going an eye for an eye, we'll all eventually land up being blind. Mm. And my hope is that South Africans are reasonable enough to hold the center. The center must have the majority that stops extremists on the left and stops extremists on the right from causing what could possibly be a rural civil war. You are not alone. I think many people, me included, sick with worry, with the growing violence and, and hatred in this country. I had a fascinating interview with Adam Habib a couple of weeks ago, and he was really concerned about the sort of rhetoric that we are hearing coming from the top. And he blames government for much of what is happening. He said, uh, you know, the longer they step back and don't get involved and don't stop this from happening, the worse it'll get. Jane, you know, that's, that's absolutely true. What you're seeing at the moment, it's a, it's a pressure valve cooker. That's what we're in at the moment. And at some point, that valve is going to burst. And the more the government sticks their head in the ground like an ostrich and pretends it's not going on, the longer and the more we have to fear. So, you know, there's, there's this untold amount of corruption that we know happened through state capture that we've seen happen at the most devastating time during the COVID crisis. And our government still refuses to hold people to account. So I'm now putting the ball in, in the, 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 the court of the president and certainly the minister of police. They need to act and they need to act fast. You know, so people often ask me, well, you're going to lay charges, you're going to do this, nothing ever happens. Well, I'm absolutely determined to force an action to happen. I'm following the rules and I'm following them very strictly. Now I expect those who are in charge of ministries to, to do their job and to make sure that those people are held to account. Jane, I hasten to add, if I had ever dared, not that I would, and that, that's the fundamental difference, but if I had ever dared utter some of the things that Julius Malema had said, I would have been in jail within two weeks, spin around time. Julius Malema is getting away with things that he should never have got away with. And I can only imagine it's because he was once part of the governing party, and perhaps he knows a little bit too much about where smaller Nyana skeletons are hidden. Natasha Mazzoni, good to talk to you. Thank you.